What's going on, fight heads? John Anik alongside Sean Shelby and Mick Maynard. This is the watch list for UFC 216. I can't even talk about this fight without just getting totally geeked. Tony Ferguson, nine straight wins. It'll be his first appearance of 2017, fighting for the UFC's interim lightweight championship against Kevin Lee, a guy who comes in having won nine of his last 10. Huge fight here, obviously a belt on the line, and, and I know there were sort of some issues trying to get the date and the fighters right, but you made this fight for 10 seconds. Just to clear things up, um, a fight was offered to Nurmagomedov uh, November 4th, and at that point we were trying to put cards together towards the end of the year. I was informed that he could not make that date, and he probably wouldn't be able to fight till at least December. Huh. And so that left Tony without a dance partner, and it's you know not just about one guy, it's about two right. guys. And so we backed Tony up, and. Kevin Lee was there, and I mean, look at his resume as of late. He's just a phenomenal fighter. He's doing fantastic. He's, he's right now, I think he's the hottest thing in the division. He's got his left leg wrapped around the right leg of Chinaldi. You don't see that very often, but he's been very good in his last two fights. And he's got him extended. Oh, there's the tap. The Motown Phenom has ended Masu Anduba's winning streak here in Brazil. And the crowd is letting Kevin Lee have it. I, at first, I thought he was just an overachiever, but I'm a believer now. Yeah. You know, he's got a, a, just a wicked, aggressive style. And then, what can't you say about Ferguson? Oh. You know, he's all over the place. He's one of, I think, the most dynamic guy in the division right now. He's exhausted. And, you know, he's... Oh, my goodness! Sensational. Sensational victory for Tony oh. Ferguson. When I'm bored, I just watch Tony Ferguson training footage. I mean, the dude's a total freak. We've heard stories about him training for six hours at a time, and he's been idle since the November fight against Rafael Dos Anjos, so he puts the nine-fight winning streak on the line, getting a championship opportunity against Kevin Lee, Mick, and it's interesting because Kevin Lee was campaigning to coach on the Ultimate Fighter, and the fact that that opportunity didn't go his way, blessing in disguise, now he's getting a title fight. Yeah, it's gonna be a hell of a fight. It's really, I think it is a pick'em. I know we use that term a right. lot. It's going to be interesting to see, you know, I think Tony, obviously his jiu-jitsu is incredible. Um, he's, a t he's a 10 planet guy and, right. and uh, so obviously he has a little bit of flexibility going on and, uh, and Kevin Lee is probably going to be more than happy to take him there. So it's going to be interesting to see that contrast and I love Kevin Lee's character. I love oh, both yeah. of their characters, yeah. you know, so it's going to be fun to see the, uh, the talking back and forth. And yeah, and I think both guys are worthy too of the opportunity. If you go break down what Kevin Lee has done over his last 10 fights, Nine of 10 for Kevin Lee, nine straight for Tony Ferguson. So here we are at this beautiful Rogers Arena in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. We were hoping to see Demetrius Johnson and Ray Borg compete for the UFC flyweight title here. Instead, it will happen in Las Vegas about a month later. So good on you guys for turning this thing around quickly, but just a whirlwind of a 24 hours, I'd imagine, for you. It's just another day for us, <laughs> yeah, right, Nick? Right, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you just gotta roll with the punches. Uh, it's an unpredictable, highly volatile sport. And this is commonplace. So Demetrius Johnson going for a UFC record 11th consecutive title defense. That would make him, at least on paper, the most decorated UFC champion of all time. Seems like people are sleeping on Ray Borg a little bit, Mick. I mean, I feel like this guy is sort of a pain in the neck to fight. Great scrambler, a lot of grappling ability. Realistically, what kind of chances do you give a prime healthy Ray Borg at 24 years old? I give old? him a great chance. Yeah. I think he hit it on the head. I think he's young, he's fast, he's a great scrambler, has good stand-up, he's very well-rounded. This is one of those all-or-nothing submission attempts here. Borg goes all out for it. So Ray Borg balancing. Oh, he's got the tap! Ray Borg! Another win by way of submission! I think he has a great chance. People are absolutely sleeping on him. I doubt DJ is. I don't right. think he sleeps on anybody. I think he's the ultimate professional, and uh, he's not taking him for granted at all. Right. But I give Borg a lot better chance than the odds makers do. All right, another big fight. We'll stay with you, Mick, on this in the heavyweight division. The Black Beast, Derek Lewis, saving lives down in Houston, Texas. Now he's going to try to put himself in the championship mix if he can get through the former champ, Fabricio Verdun. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. We were just talking about how things work out. Things just kind of fall, seem to fall into place, and that is the situation here. Derek is obviously coming off a loss against Mark Hunt. Yep. Fabricio's ranked where he is. So it's, of course, in the heavyweight division as well. It doesn't take much to change your, your destiny, so to speak. And, right. You know, so if Derek can get a win here, he's right there. Actually, he'll probably be ranked higher than he ever has been. Right. And, I know Verdum obviously is an incredible black belt, very, very high level. Uh, what a lot of people don't realize though is Derek has never been submitted. You know, this guy had Gabriel Gonzaga on his back right. and he managed to get out of that. Sometimes big guys like training with those smaller guys. He's used to that speed. Nice coming. Oh, down goes Gonzaga, he's out! The Black Beast! Yet again! Man! 
Verdum is a different beast. I think he's obviously far more well-rounded, and so this is going to be a test. And as far as people, you know, Verdum is obviously very comfortable on his back as well. Right. I can't think of any place in the world where I'd rather not, not be, be against Derek Lewis Derek. and on my back. So yeah. that's going to be interesting to see what his game plan is, you know. Right. Uh, and without an obvious number one heavyweight contender, if, if one of these guys gets a win and with style points, I mean, you got Ngannou in the mix, Overeem, there's a lot of names out there, but, you know, it's a short list there at the top of that heavyweight division. All right, so this is the fight that really jumped off the card for me at 135 pounds. And I think when you look at the top 20 of all our divisions right now, I'm not sure any division is stronger than 135 pounds. To that end, 15 and one with a no contest, Tom Duquesne versus 15 and one Cody Stamen. Huge fight here at 35. And it's incredible. I mean, you got 30 wins between these two and neither one of them are ranked yet. <laughs> granted, granted, they're, they're newbies, they're coming right, in. Right. But this is the talent level. This is insane. Yes. You know, you've got Duquenois, who's really, I mean, he had probably more hype than anybody in recent memory coming into the UFC. Oh, Duquenois mixing up the elbows beautifully. And Duquenois has got to be careful. Oh, man, that's it. That's it. Tom Duquenois living up to the hype tonight. How's that for a UFC debut for the Frenchman? They're saying he's the next big thing and he's on his way up. I don't think people realize how tough Cody Stamen is. He is a highly underrated fighter right now. He's only had one fight in the UFC. He had an amazing debut on short notice. Yep. And again, he's 15 wins and, and one loss. And I think he can make top 15 in no time. And I, I certainly think that he uh, is a formidable challenge for, for Duke and Wall. Yeah. And he's got a good chance at winning this fight. Don't count him out because everybody's hyping Duke and Wall. Right. Nobody's talking about it. No, it's a good point. I'm curious to see the betting line. And I think for Cody Stamen, too, he feels like right now he's a top five, 35 in the world. He's got a chance to, to prove some of that against Tom Duke and Wall. Yeah, and he could be. And it, you know, it reminds me a lot of Rivera, where you know Rivera's coming up. Good and point, people yeah. are like, who is this guy Rivera? And out of nowhere, he's just. He's beating tough guys. Uh, he gets himself a guy like Uriah, and now everybody's like, oh my gosh, I don't know who you're, uh, right. Rivera is. We always knew who he was. And I think Stamen could be that guy. I think Duquenois is definitely that guy. All right, and finally, one fight flying under the radar a little bit in this UFC lightweight division. Benil Daryush, Evan Dunham, two ranked guys, perennial contender types. And for Evan Dunham, this is really his best chance at UFC contention, right? He's got the winning streak in tow, take out Daryush and, and really t try to make a run at that top five, right? Yeah, you know, and sometimes being a matchmaker, you make fights because the schedule and availability dictates that. Right. And that's how this fight really came together. These are two top 15 guys. And at the only time, uh, at one time when this fight was being put together, these were the only two guys available in the top 15. And so, you know, they haven't faced each other. They've got a ton of experience. So why not put them together? And that's really how this fight materialized. Yeah. And I think it's another pick em fight. 18th UFC appearance for Evan Dunham. He'll try to make it five consecutive wins against Benil Daryush, who has won two of his last three. So there's your pay-per-view main card. UFC 216, October 7th from Las Vegas, Nevada. Mick Maynard, Sean Shelby will be Octagon side. I will be too. Thanks for watching the watch list. We'll see you then.